The biggest brands in the world are working out that actually we want to be sort of loved and trusted by people because it's good for business and they've got the data now which kind of proves that when they do that stuff that business is better. So we've got all sorts of really big clients coming on board now who want to you know, make the world a better place you know? and it becomes a completely legitimate sort of business approach to kind of say hey guys we think you're going to make more money and have a more successful more loved brand um, if you do more good in the world. But if I can sell beer and kind of make the world a better place, sell cars and make the world a better place and do that kind of stuff or be part of that, then that's kind of, you know, feels good. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, brands are figuring it out other than Pepsi, who just don't seem to know how to do it at all. <laughs> Lucky, the um, brand from South America, and one of the big problems they have is with children drowning on their way to school because they have to cross the Amazon River. And they developed an inflatable backpack that doubled up as a life-saving vest. This tiny little brand and really beginning to do something good. Hopefully off the back of it, when they get awarded, when they get a pencil, they'll also get that Kickstarter funding to really take it up to the next level. It's a really great bit of design, the idea that, you know, kids have got rucksacks that are essentially life jackets. But there's just this beautiful marriage between, you know, I think it's great that that brand did it because it's going to save kids' lives. But I also can see why the marketing director did it because he's going to sell more snacks for kids. Yeah. I've seen it a lot with clients over in New Zealand. That, you know, they, they want to see the whole thing. You know, they want to sort of almost see success um, straight away when you're pitching the, the idea. And they quite often won't buy stuff because you know it's like, well, you know, we're not sure. You know, we're not in control of it and that kind of stuff. But getting them, persuading them, so I think what clients can do is do the beta test, you know, and sometimes we feel like, you know, and we criticise ourselves and industry, oh, it's only small, but you've got to start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the data that's coming out is that the brands with a social purpose at their core are growing twice as fast as, um, you know, brands that haven't got that. So again, you know, I don't want to go over, you know, keep talking about the making money side of it, but, you know, if you're not making money, you can't do shit. And then it's amazing that, you know, you can actually get those things together. So I think that's, again, you know, just coming back to that. The brilliant thing about all this work that we have seen over the last couple of days is you can see that when brands really speak their truth and have a real purpose in their world, that they can actually do, you know, great stuff. And hopefully this will inspire brands to really start really driving their purpose first and then everything else will follow. And obviously these days with social media and whatnot, I mean, you've got a good idea, you know, it just start, you know, it gets picked up and then they get excited, right? And then they see the potential in it and suddenly it becomes really important to them and then there's more money and then it's a big program and then, you know, etc. And I have to say, kind of by the end of yesterday when we were looking at graphite and yellow pencils, so incredibly difficult to judge where those levels were because for every extraordinary piece there was something which, which was even more extraordinary. And I think in a usual year, in a usual jury, you would have probably have expected some of the things that got woods or maybe not at all uh, to, you know, to be really well awarded, but it was just like the, the, the work was phenomenal.